Hi everyone, it's Victor speaking. <clears throat> and today we are going to be talking about Sedna stationing retrograde. Now, I know there is not much out there about Sedna and probably uh, plenty of astrologers uh, don't necessarily look at it. They don't find um, her position in the natal chart very prominent. But um, I do like using her a lot. And I, I do believe also I have um, already kind of summarized the meaning of Sedna in previous videos. <coughs> Sorry, but if you haven't seen it, then in this video, I'm going to be describing Sedna for you. And um, I just want to shed some light on uh, what it might bring for us on a world scale, because um, she tends to be spending 100, 100 years in one sign. So she is on the 29 degree of uh, Taurus at the moment. And uh, actually, um, it's not going to be changing sign for a while. So we definitely need to be we, we need to be speaking about that. So Sedna uh, stationed retrograde on uh, 30th of August. So I'm a little bit behind, just one day behind. I was on holiday, so I didn't really want to do uh, to make videos, but I am back. So I'm catching up on some of the very important astrological events for you. And um, Sedna has been sitting on uh, 29 degree of Taurus, which is also called as the Weeping Sisters in the last six, seven weeks time. And now, you know, Weeping Sisters already giving you an idea that it's a crying degree, right? So we're talking about the goddesses who feel extremely sad about certain situations uh, um, in their lives. So they have got plenty to cry about. And then if you really look at uh, what was going on in the world, then actually it does describe it very well. We had flooding going on, fires, and we have got the Afghanistan situation as well. And obviously, um, um, she going retrograde, the energy will intensify significantly. So it typically, I'm predicting some type of uh, maybe hurricane or some type of natural disasters, which is ahead of us. Um, yeah, because Sedna is something which is very much related to um, anything to do with sea matters. The reason why, because actually she was a sea goddess. So she was only discovered in 2003 and her ecliptic orbit is actually huge. It's more than 11,000 year. And she tends to be spending um, uh, 100 years in one sign. Now talking about the ecliptic, ecliptic orb, you know that Pluto's ecliptic orb is about 250 years and then Uranus is 84 years and so forth. So you can see actually that Sedna takes a lot more time to go around the zodiacal signs. So um, as I mentioned, she was discovered in 2003 and she was in the sign of Aries uh, from 1865 till 1966. And uh, basically that was a, a period of time when we really could see the emancipation of women around the world, right? So it really started with, with the suffragette movement and then uh, it ended with the bra burning women's Libras of the 60s, really. And I believe that's a very appropriate illustration of this uh, collective influence what Sedna has. So, and then Sedna gradually made her way into the sign of Taurus in 1996, where she is still today. And um, if you are wondering what type of energy it talks about on a collective level, or how it influences the humanity, then think about what Taurus governs. So Taurus governs uh, things what we value. Um, so probably our value system has been changing significantly, right? And uh, probably it's kind of like an orientation towards some, some of the uh, spiritual consideration as well. So if you don't know much about her, then basically she was a very spoiled child who refused to grow up and uh, she kept turning down offers of marriage and it really frustrated her father. So the father eventually gave her, gave her away to a man in the village in exchange of fish. Now this man actually um, uh, looked like a man, but he was a dog. 
and then they created, or some other myth says that actually this man was a crow, but doesn't really matter, it was an animal, and then they created some family. Now, according to some of the, according to other myths, actually Sedna chose to get married to this guy to piss her father off. But um, the father eventually regretted his decision and tried to save her. Uh, but this crow or dog sent a huge storm after this uh, gentleman. And then uh, eventually the father um, kind of helped uh, said not to die because he tried to save his own life and then he pushed her into the sea. Now in the sea, actually, Sedna became uh, purified and then she became the goddess of animals, the goddess of sea. So from an astrological point of view, Sedna talks about in your natal chart, something around your father, uh, how is your fa uh, how is the relationship with your father? Now, typically, in many cases, what happens with a very prominent Sedna, for instance, on the midheaven, on around the ascendant, I would say within about two degree from both, or even on your IC, that um, uh, you, let's say as a man, you tend to get married into family where there are plenty of women surrounding you. So maybe there are plenty of sisters and the mother-in-law and then God knows who else, but somehow the man is surrounded by women continuously. Now, Sedna could actually talk about the wrong marriage. So uh, getting married for the wrong reason, maybe because of financial reasons, because of uh, uh, some marital questions such as, you know, financial matters and arranged marriage and so forth. Now, I would like to point out that I do not believe that um, I'm not saying that arranged marriage is a bad thing. Uh, if that's what you are in, it's more likely your perception about the marriage, what's wrong and what's right, okay? Um, uh, Sedna typically talks about kind of like a road of disappointment before you actually find peace. Now, Sedna only found peace once she actually became the goddess of all these whales and animals, the sea animals, basically. So it does talk about prosperity and joy as well, but kind of the road uh, you have to take is actually kind of very, very difficult with that. So typically with Sedna, firstly, we tend to be following the path, what the society says uh, that we should, uh, rather than uh, following our authentic, um, unique path, what we believe in. So um, what does the society want from us? To be rich, to be popular, to be all these social media moguls and so forth. And Sedna very much talks about that inner truth and hard desire, what you kind of need to find. Uh, it does also indicate, for instance, any type of um, air-related pollutions um, and air-related diseases as well, such as bird flu. Uh, it does talk about global warming as well. Um, somehow the question with Sedna always that how are you gonna come out of that victimized role, what were put on you and uh, how are you gonna become maybe the savior or the perpetrator overall? So in many cases, a very prominent Sedna, for instance, in ladies' chart, could indicate that they were sexually abused, raped, or in one way they were used in their own marriage. Uh, this is the asteroid, which is actually about betrayal, corruption, and lies. So now Sedna going retrograde, these topics are going to be huge. So maybe some of the lies will actually come out or we're we gonna be discovering some type of corruption which needs to be revisited. Uh, it does talk about economic and social upheavals. Um, and of course, with a retrograde period, it could actually indicate that something is going to be happening uh, when it comes in the economic world. Now, it is also re-emphasized, by the way, uh, uh, with series, and the North Node conjunction, which I'm also going to be making a video about um, today. So it's going to be posted in the next few days because um, anyway, it's going to be happening three times in the next seven months. So I believe it's going to be important to speak about it. 
Sedna typically talks about wealth, which was stolen from others, or any type of profit made illegally or unethically. Uh, so the wealth could be that uh, it was taken from the poor, or somehow they were taking advantage of the weak people, the underprivileged people. But um, also she represents pornography, violent video game industry. So with this said now, maybe uh, it's going to get revisited. So something around the legislation, maybe around pornography or uh, how much, uh, you know, maybe the age limit, whether you can actually use those video games and so forth. And Sedna symbolizes also drugs, prostitution, typically products that promote violences and emotionless sex overall. Now, the higher meaning of Sedna, as I said, is all about spirituality. So I'm, um, I do believe that uh, the Sedna retrograde is going to be something around the Marines, something around uh, oil businesses, which I believe uh, going to get impacted quite significantly, or anything to do with the ocean-related jobs, ocean-sea-related uh, 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 animals, sea-related uh, places, they are going to be impacted. So I'm actually expecting some type of flooding uh, in the near future. Now, I also would like to mention that, of course, um, I've done quite a lot of research actually around Sedna and Sedna was always play, playing a significant role in uh, very important financial crashes. So now I'm not gonna go into that in detail, going back in the past, but because Sedna is on an anerotic degree, actually until October the 24th, and she's staying retrograde till 9th of February, you know, I kind of believe that uh, it's going to be affecting the financial market uh, more likely in a negative way. However, retrograde period usually also could talk about rectification as well. So because it uh, talks about it, it is in the sign of Taurus, which is the financial market, somehow it's going to be affecting it significantly. But on a personal level, it wants you to look at uh, kind of like having a deeper uh, exploring the de your deepest values and insecurities. So, you know, maybe looking at your life in a different way, where you tend to have this victim conscious behavior going on. What is stopping you from focusing on what is the most important in your life? So these are the major topics with um, Sedna being around. So I hope if this video helps, uh, please let me know in the comment section below where your Sedna is, uh, especially if it's a, a very prominent one. Oh, by the way, uh, Sedna is um, how, if you don't know how to check it, then actually you can go on us.com and then in the asteroid list, you will be able to find her actually. Now, I also find that, um, her symbol quite interesting, which I uh, wanted to speak about as well. So it's a half Saturn position and uh, it's like, so basically there is this half Saturn and then there is a key going into uh, the Saturnian shape. So if I look at it that way, Saturn is actually the planet of karma, right? And the key is to actually unlock your full potential. So we tend to be looking at Saturn as the planet of, uh, you know, kind of like a cruel energy because it puts uh, barriers right in front of you. But Sedna can represent in your chart what, how you can unlock that Saturnian talent in your chart. So typically it's going to be affecting you the most if you have got any planets around the fixed, uh, uh, in the fixed signs, especially from, I would say 27 to 29 degree of the fixed sign, meaning Taurus, Aquarius, Scorpio and Leo, then um, Sedna will trigger you the most. So thank you everyone and hope to see you on my next video. Bye-bye.